Hi, my name is Richard Bilderbeek. I will be talking about test-driven development. This is for the course called Programming Formalisms, which is a course taught at Upmax. It's online. Uh, you can find it here, and this is the logo at the bottom um, of our course. So the problem that is addressed here is how do we grow or develop our code? Uh, there's plenty of good literature on this, and I'll show you the Pragmatic Programmer 2nd Edition, or the 20th Anniversary Edition. It's a great book if you, if, if you do write code, but want to become more professional in it, uh, but in a pragmatic way. So a newbie developer, if you ask him or her to write a function, they just start somewhere. Um, sometimes they start writing a, a complex for loop in a for loop when they they're asked to develop a function. Um, whereas experienced developers, they have a very systematic way of working. Um, and, and, and that's that that's the whole idea, to have some kind of method to grow your code uh, uh, in a rational, methodical way. So you don't need to think about how you're going to do it, because that has been thought about a lot in programming. There are multiple methodologies for this. One of them is called test-driven development. It's quite, um, it's quite well spread. Uh, a lot of people do it. There are some nuances in it. There are multiple ways to do similar things as test-driven development. Uh, let's say called agile or ag uh, extreme programming. But TDD is, in general, a systematic way to grow code. And that's the one I'll be discussing here. It's very commonly used, um, so the different flavors won't put you off track too much. So the test-driven development, test-driven development cycle goes like this. So when you develop new code, you start at the top. It's called the red phase, where you first write a test of something you want in your code. For example, you want a function to be present, or you want a function to do something. Uh, you want a function to have documentation. When you've written that test, that test should fail. You should write a test that fails. Um, you should write the simplest test that fails, ideally. But sometimes it's a question where to start with writing tests that fail. Uh, you can start everywhere. After that, you write code to make that test pass. And you can do this very lazily. Um, sometimes you really want to be very, very lazy. Um, after a while, you really need to, to 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 make the code do something useful in return. Uh, but if you can be lazy, do it here. So when your test passes, then it's time to refactor. Like sometimes you added some debug statements in your code. Um, so maybe you can refactor it, maybe you can rewrite the code and improve it that way, or clean it up, or do some uh, style testing, uh, like style checks, if you use the correct coding standard or the coding standard used by you. Uh, push it to GitHub, so you can put it online using any uh, code hosting website. And then the cycle repeats again. So this cycle take, should take about but uh, like five minutes should be a cycle. That's like the, the, the rule of thumb. Of course, if you do more complex things, it will take longer. Uh, if you do more trivial things, it will be way shorter. So there is an exercise um, called is zero. And I will show you a video in which I developed a function is zero. Uh, it's a very simple function because the goal is to get into the habit of do test-driven development, not into something doing something very useful at the start. So the function is zero, should return true if the input is a zero, should return false if the input is not a zero, and gives an error, so raise an exception in Python, when the input is not a number. So I do this in a video uh, that I already published, so I'm going to end this video here. And I'll paste the video of this, me doing this live beyond this. Then I'll see you back. See you later. Hey, do.